Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I'm going to talk about why it's important to do cute parenting stuff with your wife and what that even means and, like, what the fuck. But, you know, um, before we get to that, please do subscribe because most recent subscriber episode was when you can out-talk your spouse And that is a really important one because some people are better at verbal back and forth, but they are pushing their partner away when they do that, men and women. Um, So definitely that plus over 140 other episodes. And uh, soon I will have been doing this for two years. So that's pretty cool. Podcast for two years. Um, And soon I'll be in a million downloads. So that's pretty cool too. So contribute in any way you can, please. And thank you. All right, so what do I mean by cute parenting stuff? So I always talk about the pumpkin patch. This is like, you know, I mean, you probably just had a bunch for other holidays based on when this is going to be scheduled. You probably just did stuff for Christmas and driving to see the lights and like whatever. Uh, You're coming up on New Year's. What is she going to want to do? Something with the kids, with uh, staying up late or not staying up late based on how she thinks about staying up late. But something that involves a lot of pictures that she could say she's making memories, that the kids look extra cute, and that involves other human beings. And if you are a guy that either does not like other human beings or thinks that the kids aren't going to remember this shit anyway or that thinks that you work hard all week and now you just want to break on the weekends, your wife is going to hate you um, when she's older because this is the only time that you have small kids. So, you know, it's kind of one of these situations where there's only... Uh, one real right answer (laughs) that I have seen, you know, just like uh, I have only one right answer in the sex domain. Like I don't say, oh, there's all kinds of marriages, you know, and for some of them, you know, the guy doesn't get laid for like 10 years in the middle because like you have young kids. I don't ever say that bullshit, right? So you could trust me when I also say that there is no world in which you do not have to do little parenting stuff that your wife thinks is cute. It's extremely important when the children are young. And if you don't do it when they're young, then when they are older and she is older, she will not want to be married anymore in any meaningful sense. Because to her, having these kids is the apex of her life. She thought about being a mother since she was a little girl, usually. And now she wants, there's, they are really only young for a short amount of time. She hears that all over the internet because it's true. Time only goes one direction. And you only have an actual baby, by the way, for 12 months. And then it's a toddler. And that makes women very sad, you know. So it, you can't just not do the stuff ever. And um, you can't just not do most of the stuff either and assume that she has her mother or her sister or some friend and then that's okay. So you have to do the stuff that she's taking pictures of with the kids. You have to go to their little lessons. You have to go to not all of them. I mean, you don't have to go to like every time that the kid goes to a gymnastics class. But if it's on the weekend, then you should, you know, because what the fuck else are you doing truly? So you're going to the gym. You could do that a different time. You're watching a whole bunch of televised sports. I don't have a lot of patience for that, you know, because it, it, that is just sitting down you know, passively consuming shit. And then you're going to be like, well, she's on Facebook a lot. I don't care. What are you like? You're going to compete. Are you going to be a race to the bottom on everything to see who could be like a lazier person? You know, what I'm saying is this. If you want to watch televised sports for the entirety of the weekend with small children, I'm telling you from everything that I know and that I see in couples counseling, that is, you are creating a tremendous empathic rupture because you only have one weekend, right? The 
like it's not like you can alternate like what days the weekend is and like sometimes you know the the kids are in school when you're watching televised sports it doesn't work like that so unless this is a huge family thing where everybody's really into watching sports people come over the kids are engaged somebody you know like this is a family event it's fun this is part of the kids culture cool And maybe you could make it like that. Maybe that could be what you get out of this podcast. Maybe if you want to watch the game that bad, then you should make it part this whole big family event where you get the kids little t-shirts or gear or what have you. And everybody's a big fan. And you also save up to get tickets to go in person and take the kids to the game a couple times a season. And everybody is a Packers fan or whatever. And that's like a huge thing. And you involve yourself in cleaning the house so that all the family can come over, extended family or friends can come over with their kids and you take some pictures of the kids in their Packers gear with your wife, who you also bought a Packers sweatshirt for and whatever the hell else you want to do. But you're going to make it a big event, right? Because otherwise it is just one dude sitting on the couch and his wife figuring out something to do with the kids during that time, which is not a, you know, not a negligible amount of time. It's an entire afternoon, right? And uh, if the kids don't nap during that time, then she's got to figure out something to do with them every single weekend, and it sucks. And for a young woman, you're also leaving money on the table here, because if they do nap, then that's an excellent time to have sex, because that is not the morning when the kids may wake up, and it's not the night when she's exhausted, as I've taught you, but it's the afternoon when she could be, you know, pretty in the mood if you weren't watching the game. And if you're like, oh, no, my wife would never want to have sex on the, in the afternoon, you don't know until you ask, because she may think that the only option is you sitting on your ass and watching the game. And that does not put her in the mood. But if you were to turn off the game and look at her and say you want to go upstairs, you might be very, very surprised. And if you're listening to this as a woman, you could ask him, do you realize that I would have sex on the weekend if you were not watching the game? Because that takes up six hours of your day or of your weekend or whatever. So that's just um, one big one that I see a lot is, is the sports consumption. Now, if you're playing sports, then at least, you know, you're getting, you're extending your lifespan. The kids are watching you, um, you know, be healthy, be active, be physical. But if you're just, in, if you are literally just watching and that is like the closest you get to sports is just watching it, you got to think about that, right? Because like, you know, if she sat down and watched uh, reality TV in the middle of the day from one to four, you know, you would not be thrilled about that while you had to figure out what to do with the kids. So, I mean, that just is what it is. And if I lose followers, good, you know, you'll have more time for the sports. And <laughs> it's just is what it is. But that is truly what I see because she feels that you are picking TV over family time and that's never going to go well. Just like it doesn't go well when you think that she's picking mindless scrolling over time to be close as a couple, right? So if you want to go on date night, what if you wanted to go on date night and she's like, nah, got to catch up on reality TV? You would not be happy, right? Um, So, you know, nobody wants to feel second to passive consumption. It's like the worst of any world. The person's not even doing anything and they prefer to be sitting watching something than to be engaging with you. Men feel this is an empathic rupture when the woman is addicted to TV or her phone and women feel like that when the man is addicted to TV, sports or whatever and his and or his phone or gaming or whatever. So this is probably beyond the purview of this. I should probably do a whole podcast about that. Anyway, you got to engage on the weekends with the children. I'll tell you, coming out on the other end of it with my kids all being in double digits, it is a small amount of time. You think they're going to want to hang out with you forever and they don't, you know. So she's not wrong in thinking that there's like a finite window that you can engage with these children and do cute stuff with them. And if you think, why is everything about the pictures? I don't even know what to say. You know, I mean, I have made that so clear that people have different values. Women like to look back at the memories of the pictures. The kids look cute. Uh, Pictures are big in our culture. This is how you show all of your friends what you did on the weekend because we don't all live like it's not like Renfest times where we all like see each other in the marketplace, you know, and she likes it just like how you like 
Porn probably would be the equivalent. Like, why do you like looking at moving pictures called pornography? Well, that's why she likes looking at pictures of other people's kids and taking pictures of her own. Because people are visually oriented, and in the absence of actually getting to do those pornography things, right, you're going to get to look at them. Which, of course, should you use porn? No. Should she be, like, literally, like, setting up, like, the Truman Show with your children? No. But if she wants to take a few pictures, <laughs> you know, of events, that is so she could look at it later and say, I'm a good mom. I did these things. Look how cute the kids are. I want to frame this one. I want to not do, I want to, you know, like, uh, not frame that one. It's like a whole, like, creative thing. She puts the pictures up in your house. It's a whole deal. So you got to get with that program. If you want to have a happy wife, you have to engage with the children. For many men, this is not a big deal, and they're already engaging with, engaging with the children as much as their wife is. I see that more and more. But I do still, still see the opposite of that, where the woman is expected to give her whole weekend over to the children, and the man, that's his break. And this is particularly egregious when she's a stay-at-home mom, where he feels that that's literally what she signed up for, and this is his only time to relax. When is her time to relax then, right? So you got to think about it. The stay-at-home moms with the kids that are in school is a different deal. I get it. They got a lot of time to relax. I'm with you. Fine. However, if, they are, if, if they're not yet school-aged and or she's also working, right, then she got no time either because she's with them the whole week or she's at work during the week too. So either way, nobody has any time. So that means that the weekends have to be split. And if they're split where you take the kids sometimes and then she takes the kids sometimes, that works for some people. But for other people, the more sensitive or um, the more highly sensitive or, you know, just a family oriented women, really. Somebody who wants to be in a family versus like a collectivist <laughs> versus an individualist. So she wants to feel that the whole family does things together. This is really big for a lot of women, and men are like, why aren't we dividing and conquering? Maybe you could call it quality time love language, because that's what it is, too. You know, And so if she wants to do stuff as a couple, or rather as a family, and you don't ever want to do stuff as a family, and basically look at the kids as, you know, is it your turn or my turn? I tag you in with the kids so I can do what I want, and then you tag me in so you can do what you want. That is a really good way to practice for being divorced. And I see that, in fact, that's not just like a throwaway funny line. I see that, that that happens when couples get divorced for years already. A lot of times the woman will say to me, well, you know, it's not really going to bother the kids that much as it might with another family because they're used to us just taking turns with them. He does his thing. I, I do my thing. You know, he does his thing with the kids while I go to the gym. Um, I watch them while he goes out with his friends. He watches them while I go out with my friends. I travel to see my friends. He travels to see his friends. Basically, we don't have any family time and except like maybe major holidays and that's it. So, you know, then it's it, the woman says, so the kids aren't really even used to spending time with us together. And so then whatever, might as well get divorced from her perspective because she's unhappy. She assumes that he doesn't give a shit really about spending time with her because he never really did with the possible exception of wanting to sleep with her. So this whole family time is major and doing these cute little things that if you want even extra credit, you would take pictures of your wife doing stuff with the children or family pictures, selfies of the whole family. This is important. This is all over media. So you know it's a common female complaint is that they don't have pictures with them and the kids doing cute things. And if they do, it's like, you know, they had to tell the guy to do it. He doesn't just take pictures. So another one thing you could get out of this podcast is take pictures of your wife with the kids and even send them to her or even post them on social media. And I have a whole podcast about why your wife wants you to post pictures on social media that I believe is that has that is the title. So go forth and listen to that one, too. But um, the kids really only are little a short amount of time. They only want to do cute little stuff a short amount of time. Eventually, you get to a point where, you know, there's like a cute playground somewhere and nobody cares. And that point, you know, because the kids are too old to play on the playground. And that comes sooner than you think. And your wife talks to other women all the time about the children and at various ages and stages. And so she knows this stuff is fleeting. If she tends toward anxiety or depression, sometimes she can be even very very, very upset about this. And I have podcasts and posts called Why Your Wife Gets So Upset About the Kids Growing Up. That's very relevant to understand this as well. Sometimes she takes it too far. Sometimes she tries to keep them younger than they should be. Like in my, um, 
in my podcast about how when men want their wife to act like she's younger, it would be the equivalent of the woman wanting the daughter to go to the American Girl doll store into adolescence, right? And so sometimes women actually do stuff like that. They want the kids to act younger than they are because they don't want them to grow up because they're so sad about it. That's not healthy. But when your kids are actually little, wanting to kind of seize the day into cute little family activities is normal and adaptive. And that's being a good mom and by any rubric in our culture, and it's either kind of engage or be left behind because really she's not going to forgive you for that. And I've seen that so many times in, in couples counseling where guys think, man, I really should have done it. You know, I should have gone. I should have gone to the pumpkin festival. And they say it, you know, I'm, this is a big one in therapy for avoidant guys when they're upset that the woman is divorcing them. They say, I'm sorry, I wasn't involved enough with the family. I'm sorry, I was always doing my own thing. That's true. That's like, you know, and it's not just about her. It's not just about the divorce. As an older man with a, with a wider perspective, they think, do I remember sitting down and playing that video game? No. Would I have remembered teaching my kid to swim? Yeah. You know, and my kid would remember it too. And that would have been a nice thing for basically me and the children too. Because remember, it's not just her. The kids also want you there at whatever they're doing. They want you around. And so, you know, it's, it's something to really reflect on. And if your hackles go up that you feel like, oh, I'm on the defensive, think about why. Think about if there's anything, any truth to it that you're, you are kind of opting out of a lot of events that would make your family unit stronger and maybe your wife has a point. All right, I uh, hope this was useful to you guys and please do subscribe and I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day.